In this Oslo video, I'll talk about aplanatic ray aiming and the perfect lens. This is actually a video that's quite heavy on physics, but is important to understand a few of the real getting into detail and guts of what Oslo is actually doing. So the first thing is aplanatic ray aiming and the Abbe sign condition. So you can look up the Abbe sign condition and get some understanding of how optical systems with an appreciable aperture, this means in the non-paraxial uh, region, uh, in, the, in our manuals we say over about a numerical aperture of one. Essentially these systems require aplanatic ray aiming in order to calculate uh, radiance correctly in uh, the pupil. In the default mode in Oslo, the pupil is assumed to be illuminated uh, uniformly by whatever light is coming from the object and what you're trying to see. So this is the, the default ends up being aplanatic ray aiming and the reason is covered in our optics reference manual and there's a couple of pictures shown there. On the left here you see what would happen if you were to aim the rays apraxially. I'll define this in uh, the next slide or two. Uh, and then on the right we have aplanatic ray aiming. Now if you have a uniformly illuminated pupil it's very clear that the sampling is much more accurate when you have aplanatic ray aiming. So what is this exactly? Well on the left we I'm showing for a given field point what paraxial ray aiming would actually do. It is actually using direction tangents to uh, determine the spacing between rays. And the problem with this, of course, happens when this beam gets a larger and larger NA, it gets wider and wider, and you would note that they would get closer and closer if spaced uh, according to the direction tangents. Most optical systems, though, uh, work uh, closer to obeying the sine condition and to do this you would actually want to use direction cosine versus direction tangents. Essentially you aim at a, a sphere instead of aiming at a plane for this and this would actually space things more correctly to get the radiometry correct. Now at this point uh, we'll pull up the program and I'm just going to show a perfect lens so this is actually in the Oslo EDU part of the public directory and there's perfect magnifier too. And if we were to just take a look at the picture, the rays come out from a given point and actually personally I don't like having that uh, field ray, you could actually have it there. And so to get rid of that I'll do UOCDRL, you can actually also go to the lens drawing conditions. Uh, right here to get that right now that spreadsheet's open so it's grayed out and I just don't want to even bother tracing that ray I just think it's a little bit distracting in the current picture so here we have for the uh, on axis point you can see this is actually a 2x perfect lens notice what happens though you actually have a discontinuity at the lens plane if it was determined to be perfectly flat and this is actually correct according to the physics if you were to take and make the uh, numerical aperture really small, these rays end up being, uh, uh, you know, paraxial region, these rays would be in the same location. But once you have a case where you're non-paraxial, then you, uh, aplanatic ray aiming would lead to this uh, sort of discontinuity. If you are interested in knowing where the aplanatic ray aiming is in the program, if you actually go to the general operating conditions, uh, you can see down here we have ray aiming type aplanatic apraxial. I personally have never used paraxial. I'm not sure why you would ever intentionally set it that way since the aplanatic becomes like the paraxial when you are in a paraxial uh, type of region. Perhaps the only reason you would do that is if you're doing some sort of geometrical optics oriented calculations for aberration series or something like that. So just keep it on the aplanatic ray aiming mode. So that's where uh, it exists in the program. And this discontinuity can be explained with this picture. So a perfect 2x lens for finite conjugates, this is the uh, effective focal length of a 100 millimeter case that I just showed that's in our demo files. This uh, discontinuity occurs because if you actually aim at the sphere, I've shown a sphere that relates to the beam on the left, the object beam, and then the beam on the right. 
the image beam. And if you notice where we intersect that reference surface, if we draw a straight line over to the ray on the other side, essentially, if we do this picture correctly, we actually get this, uh, this line would connect where the ray intersects the sphere on one side and on the other. And this is actually correct according to uh, the sign conditions. So this is how most optical systems actually behave. So Oslo internally is doing ray, sp ray spacing according to direction cosines. Uh, if it is actually going to use direction tangents, it's essentially going to do that in an internal calculation unless you force it otherwise. Uh, I don't recommend that you ever take it off the aplanatic ray aiming. Another uh, final point is about perfect lenses. If you want to use a perfect lens for some reason, if you go to the perfect lenses under uh, the contents and special surface data, that uh, you can look at that demo file we have as well. This gives you the directions of how to set up a perfect lens for different cases. So uh, a perfect lens might be used, the most common use for it is you uh, have light coming out of the system towards the image and you wanna actually focus it down and look at things uh, as if you have uh, a, a, a system afterwards that is actually focusing the light down. So for example, let's say you're working with something like a binocular and you want to actually mimic a perfect eye with it, you would set up a perfect lens to do this. So uh, there are other uses for perfect lenses besides that. This just covers the physics for those cases and the aplanatic ray aiming.